well, if we don't tackle the emissions from quick climbing cement industries, we won't be able to meet our climate targets. So they account for about 8% of global CO2 emissions. So just by tackling these two specific industries could be huge wins for decarbonisation and also our climate goals. Well, for the first part, the massive industries. So they're used all over the world. Um, quick climb is, a, is used in steel making, in, in uh, pulp and paper, um, used in water purification and cement, which is part of concrete. And concrete is the second most used substance on earth. When I talk about massive in terms of cement production, we're talking about 130 tons of cement produced every second globally. So this is the, the main part. Another part of it is that CO2 is a byproduct of the quick lime production process or the cement production process. So for every tonne of cement that's produced, about 600 kilos of that is transformed directly into CO2. And this is actually part, this is an intrinsic part of the process. You can't have cement without this actual um, process going on. And so it's a byproduct of the, of the cement production process. And this means that cement produces unavoidable CO2. Well, in many industries are going towards electrification, which makes sense. So in many cases, we can replace fossil fuels with um, low carbon or renewable electricity. And this is very important in many different industries to be able to go in that direction. However, it doesn't tackle the entire problem, especially when it comes to the production of cement and quick lime. We do need to heat up the, the limestone to these quite high temperatures, and that is typically done with some form of a fossil fuel. So we typically burn some sort of oil or coal or, or natural gas in order to do that. And so this accounts for about 200 to 300 kilos of CO2 for every ton of cement that's produced. However, as I mentioned before, we have just by this heating up and breaking down of the limestone, we produce an additional 600 kilos of CO2 for per every ton of cement that's produced. So this means that if we are going to tackle the cement industry using electrification, this means that we only will we will only tackle about 30% of the problem because only 30% of the emissions actually comes from burning the fossil fuels. The rest of the emissions come from the actual breakdown of the limestone. So it's very critical that there's some sort of capture process for this CO2 and this can be done either using our EAC or, or by CCS. So CCS stands for carbon capture and storage and this is a process or method or technology that's used in order to basically extract or to suck CO2 out of a gas stream and this can be from a, a factory or a power plant or something like that. So CCS has been in the news for recently for good and for bad. In many cases, it's seen as a process or a method or way of um, fossil fuel industries to be able to continue business as usual. Um, and this is a, a, an OK stance. But however, when it comes to cement and quick lime industries, you, we have to be able to take care or handle the CO2 that's produced by just the process itself. So this is why it's important. And CCS could be one of these um, possibilities in order to do this. However, one should take into consideration that be using the CCS, the typical CCS technologies, it is also energy intensive. So this has to be considered when utilizing it for these industries. So the Saltex EAC technology, uh, which stands for electric arc calciner, is basically more of a separation technology rather than a carbon capture and storage technology. So we took it from a more from a first principles approach rather than um, when it comes to CCS, which basically uh, tries to separate out the CO2 from a mixture of gases. What we said is uh, what happens if we only have CO2 gas in our system? So what we've done is that we take the limestone, we put it into an airtight chamber, we heat it up to quite high temperatures using renewable electricity. And that way, when we do the separation 
of the, when the limestone decomposes into the quicklime and the CO2. We get the CO2 in, in gas form and we get the quicklime in the solid, as solid particles. So it's quite easy to separate the solid and this gas. So what we get from our EAC is a pure stream of CO2 that we can take directly towards storage. And so this makes it a lot easier to separate. So you, you use a lot less energy for this separation process versus like a CCS process where you need to separate out gas particles from other gas particles. So this makes it the, the EAC technology a lot less energy intensive compared to typical CCS systems. So since these quick lime cement industries need to actually tackle this unavoidable CO2, the EAC is a good way of doing that because it can significantly reduce the amount of energy that's needed. Um, in order to do that, it's much easier to do the separation method or let's say less energy intensive to do the separation method, but also we produce a lower volume of CO2. So this means that you, on one side, you can reduce the amount of energy that's used, and on the other side, you actually don't have that as much CO2 to, to manage and to handle and to, to have to store at the end of the day. So it's a cost reduction on both ends. Yeah, that's a good question. And the engineering answer is it depends because uh, a lot of it depends on the availability of, of low carbon electricity which and the increased demand in electricity for the system. So that needs to be one thing that's important for, for the application of this technology. But also in, in case of retrofitting, we need to also adapt the system to attach the, our EAC to the overall system. And in many cases, you can actually reuse a lot of the components. And uh, so this attachment is relatively similar to what you would do in a, in a CCS process. The other thing is that if you're looking at a new build, so a completely different, uh, a completely new system, this opens up some other possibilities that um, I think are kind of unique to the EAC, especially being able to co-locate the plant with existing uh, renewable energy sources or a place where you can actually store the CO2 opens up a lot of different possibilities there or even to have smaller distributed plants that are actually quite close to local resources and to also local energy sources in order to be able to minimize the impact of this cement production. So there are lots of different ways of doing this implementation and we have been exploring all these different aspects um, at Sortex. So we at Saltex, the main goal for us is to rapidly scale this technology. This is why we're working with some of the biggest players in the cement and quick lime industries in order to be able to scale the technology. So just quite recently um, commissioned the two megawatt system, and this is going to be a precursor to an eight megawatt commercial system, which is going to be part of our industrialization strategy where we're going to be going towards more modularized solutions which will be key in rapidly deploying this technology um so yes uh, there are different ways of, of implementing the technology and for us what is going to be key let's say the fundamentals of the implementation is are you producing a, a solid or a powdered material that needs to be heated to 500 plus degrees Celsius? So that's the, let's say, the general. Um, this is interesting for, let's say, production of aluminium, for magnesium, um, in direct air catcher systems, in lithium production. And there's so many different um, opportunities here. But for us, uh, one of the key is that we can tackle these high impact industries where we can actually help to decarbonize them with our technology. Yeah, so that's a really good question because from, from our perspective, we need to have these carbon pricing signals. So it is right now it's too cheap to just release CO2 into the atmosphere. So there needs to be some sort of incentive for us not to do that and for us to actually store the CO2. And then talking about storage, then we need to have the facilities to store large amounts of CO2. So a lot of investment, a lot of work in technologies needs to go into that as well. So we see that as a, a, a very critical factor. And then we also need to be investing more in these decarbonization technologies so that we can move it 
quickly. So the, I think that there needs to be more of a sense of urgency for the development of these technologies and for moving towards this um, carbon-free future.